Hallelujah, hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. I don't know about you all, but I feel like David, when they said, when David said, I was glad when they just said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Um, certainly, you know, it is good to be amongst the land of the living. It is good to be in the place of worship one more time, whether it be on Zoom, whether we meet in person, we all know that the church is on the inside of us and wherever we gather together is where the church is. So I just thank and praise God for this beautiful Sunday evening. It was a beautiful Sunday, nice and sunny, weather in the 90s, uh, my kind of weather. Uh, even, even when it gets extremely hot, I still much rather have it than the cold. So I thank God for this time of year, especially because it's one of my favorite times of year and that my eyes are still here, you know, above ground to see it. We're going to go ahead and get started with our service on tonight and have our opening prayer by myself, followed by devotion by our minister in training and welcome address, um, Minister Dawn Ross. Let us bow. God, we thank you and we praise you, oh God, that you are God and that you are God alone. Lord, as we gather into your presence one more time, oh God, we come into your presence with humble hearts, oh God, asking you to forgive us of any sins, oh God, of omission and commission, God. God, we thank you and we praise you, oh God, for your sovereignty. God, we thank you and we praise you, oh God, for your love. God, we thank you and we praise you for your forgiveness, oh God. We thank you and we praise you for your son who died on Calvary's cross, oh God. Your son who made this all possible, oh God. So we just say thank you in the name of Jesus. God. God, we thank you how you kept us just another week, oh God, in the name of Jesus. As the old folks sang, oh God, it's just another day that the Lord has kept me. So God, we just say Amen. thank you in spite of, oh God, Amen. in the name of Jesus, no matter what we go through, oh God, no matter what we face, oh God, no matter what we have to deal with, God, God, you said you're always there. You'll never leave us, nor will you forsake us. So we just say thank you in the name name of Jesus. And God, as James said, we can just count it all joy, oh God, when we go through various trials and tribulations, God. So God, I thank you, oh God, in the name of Jesus for the joy that's on the inside of me, oh God, that the world didn't get and the world can't take away, God. Yes. God, now we ask as we continue to gather in your presence, God. God, we invite you, oh God, in this service on this evening. Have your way, Holy Ghost, for we can do nothing without your spirit spirit, oh God. For you said it's not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, God. So endow us with your spirit now, God. God, we call on you, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Have your way on this evening, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I say, you don't know like I know what he's done for me. I say, you don't know like I know what he's done for me. I say, you don't know like I know what he's done for me. You don't know like I know what he's done for me. I get happy when I think about what he's done for me. I get happy when I think about what he's done for me. I get happy when I think about what he's done for me. I get happy when I think about what he's done for me. I get excited when I think about what he's done for me. I get excited when I think about what he's done for me. I get excited when I think about what he's done for me. I get excited when I think about what he's done for me. I say I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I say, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. 
See that I'll never get? No, I'll never. How can I forget what you've done for me? How can I forget how you set me free? How can I forget how you brought me out? How can I forget? No, never. Jesus, I'll never forget what you done for me. Say, Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget. No, never. I said, God is a great God. Yes, he is. God is a great God. Yes, he is. Say, God is great and greatly to be praised. Glory, glory to his name. God is great and greatly to be praised. Say, bless the Lord, oh my soul. I said, God is great and greatly to be praised. Glory, glory to his name. God is great and greatly to be praised. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. I said, oh. church would like to extend a warm welcome thank to our visitors uh, it is with great pleasure that we welcome you with the love of jesus christ on behalf of our pastor and all of us here we thank you for coming up this evening and helping us to um, lift the name of the lord on high okay we are excited and delighted so we ask that the holy spirit have his way Worship as you feel fit and just have a high time in the Lord. Hey Amen. Hallelujah. Don't you, your computer sound kind of low. I'm not sure why, but I can barely hear you. But um, uh, this is the part of service where everybody can participate. It's one of my favorite parts of the service is what we refer to as testimony service. This is where we encourage each other. We uplift each other. We give God his glory. Uh, we allow those to know, you know, that God has brought us through and he continues to bring us through. And if he's done it for us, he will do it for you. So I'm asking if anyone has a testimony that you'll unmute yourself right now and go ahead and give God his uh, due glory. If you just want to say, Lord, I thank you for waking me up on this morning. If you just feel like singing a song to the Lord, this is the time of service where we um, um, do that. So if anybody has a testimony, you can take yourself off mute and go ahead and give God his praise. The Bible says that we overcome by the blood Thank of the Lord, Lamb everybody. and the word of our testimony. Praise the Lord, everybody. Can y'all hear me? I'm just grateful to be here this afternoon because God been good to me. A while back I had I had problem with my lung. You know, and um they gave me medication. I had a blood clot on my lung, you know. They gave me medication and um see God is good. And I, I, I went back to the doctor to do a AKG or whatever that is. And they told me they couldn't find it. And I know it was God. You know, and, um, and then they told me I had to constantly take the medication. Two days later, 
the lady called me and said, we're going to send you a package in the mail for you to return that medication because you don't have to take it anymore. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good and he's worthy to be praised. And like some people know, I don't see it on Facebook and some did. A while back, I had a, a stress test and I failed. And I probably have cataract surgery, but um, they couldn't do it because of the situation that I was going through with. And the other day I went for catheterization. They went through my wrist and up and they looked at my heart and I thank God for it. They seen that I had a blockage in my heart. And at the same time they was doing, you know, the thing in there, they was able to put a stent in my heart. Praise God, God is good. Yes, and he's worthy. Amen. To be Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because let me tell God. you, let me tell you now. I used to try to walk around the complex where I live, and I couldn't. But praise God this morning, I got up and walked around the whole complex. When I got back to my house, I wasn't even tired. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God is Hallelujah. good, and I'm just, I'm just grateful to yes. be a part of this service tonight. And I want to pray to, to everybody that God continue blessing each and every one of you. You too, Reverend Ross. I pray that God continue to anoint you from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Thank you. And Amen. allow you to allow you to continually doing what he has called you to do. Hallelujah. God bless. God, God bless. bless. God bless. What a wonderful testimony. God truly is a healer and he is a keeper. You know, I just love, I love how God takes care of us. And it's really, we can't attribute it to nothing that we do because the Bible says all of our righteousness is as filthy rags. But God does it because he loves us, because he is true to who he is. And that's the one thing I love about God. You don't have to worry about his character. He doesn't change. He said, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And the same thing that he did for brother bird is the same thing that he will do for each and every one of us all we have to do is just believe and keep our hands in the hands of the lord god is just so good is there another testimony on the line tonight tonight i have a testimony praise god praise god so last weekend for my birthday i was surprised with the trip to puerto rico god is good because he allowed us to get there back there and back safe Awesome. And I'm also grateful that he blessed me with people who love me enough to plan such a surprise. Yes. <laughs> Amen. You know, it's, not, it's not easy pleasing certain people. You know, I'm one of those people. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but yes, and I'm just thankful for my health. Yes. That's it, really. Praise, Praise God. God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all know Raven is shy, so that's yes. the yes. That's why I praise that God on that. You guys, you see, I can't stop smiling. God is so yes. good. That God, I just Amen. love how he's moving in, in this service in particular with those who are shy and those who are new to the faith. And, you know, God, is he really is just true to who he says he is, you know, and it's just amazing to see people grow and growing in God and, you know, um, getting to, to where God is calling them to be. So I thank God for Raven. She is also one of our faithful ones that's usually on every single Sunday. So I thank you, praise God for and that testimony. Is there another, Do I know you have one last week. Did you want to share? that this week uh, oh you can you hear me now yeah it's low but we can hear you i don't know what's going on you're good computer. robin oh see for yourself oh yeah <clears throat> first i want to give an honor to god who's the head of my life to my beautiful pastor sister best friend god bless you god bless you so anyway so i don't know how many of you know that unemployment unemployment kicked me off without without warning I've been filing faithfully every week and it was accepted. It says your, your claim has been accepted. It'll be processed the next day. So, you know, for one whole month, I had no income. And when I said God is a, a way maker, I did not lack for that whole month, you know? 
But I, I got on, my sister started sending me emails for job opportunities here in Georgia. And I was just filling the application after application after application. And so the next day I got discouraged and I said, nobody called me back. And she said, well, you have to give it at least a couple of weeks. Do you know that very next day, my phone just started ringing, my email just started dinging. And I just have so many job opportunities, which I did take this one job opportunity. It's at a factory. But do you know that God has me at that place because you know my passion is to learn Spanish. There's a whole bunch of Mexicans, Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, Costa Ricans, everything at that job. And not only that, it's physical labor. So he's also given me my body back. So I just want to thank and praise God that he is just an awesome God. Amen. Man, God truly, you know, he truly does care about the things that we care about. And, you know, sometimes we think it's it's minor or it's minute. We don't want to bother God with it. Or we think God ain't got time to be worried about that. It's so little and it's so small. And he got other, you know, things to take care of in the world. But God truly does care about the things that we care about. You know, I mean, it's so simple as even when I go to a grocery store or to a mall or something and I pray for a park, you know, because I don't have the best knees, you know, they're telling me I need uh, new knees and stuff like that. But some days are better than the other. Some days I can walk, some days I can't. And it's just like, I'll pull up and it, it could be one of them days where my knee is really bothering me. And I say, God, I, you know, if I don't get a close park then I can't go into the store and before you know it, a park will just open up right there in front of the door. So he really does care about those minor, minor, minor things that we care about. You know, and there's nothing too big or too small that we can't ask God that he won't do. That's how much he loves us. So I thank God for those beautiful testimonies that went forward. Um, is there another testimony in the house on tonight? Has God done anything for anybody else this week? Give an honor to God, to the pastor, to the saints, yes, to, to the, um, uh, oh my goodness, um, uh, the other people online. Just, you got to forgive, you, you have to bear with me because I have a little amnesia and whatever, brain damage from an accident. But anyway, um, I just wanna say that I had surgery. Well, I had three surgeries on my hand, slash wrist, arm, whatever. So I had this particular surgery, my last surgery. And um, so after the surgery, so you know you, how you, you're in the room and you come in too. So this lady, this nurse comes in and she goes, and I had heart issues. No, mm. I was dealing with heart issues and all this other stuff before my accident. So she comes, she says, I had to meet you. And I'm like, okay. She said, because doing surgery, I got to see your heart. And she said, I had to come meet this woman with the perfect heart. Wow. Now, Robert, y'all remember when I was going through those issues? With my heart, can you hear me? Uh huh. Amen. Okay. With 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 my heart. So anyway, it was just a blessing for her to come and tell me that yes. she had to meet the woman with the perfect heart. I'm like the perfect heart. Oh my God. Yes. God is God. so so good. Yes. So mm -hmm. I just had to share that because it was the it was amazing to me. Amen. Amen. And I just, I just praise God. And I just ask that you pray my strength of the Lord. Amen. I'm having surgery um, on the 24th. So please keep me in prayer. Hopefully that's God's will. That would be my last surgery. As I've said before, that would be my sixth surgery that I had because of my car accident. So pray my strength in the Lord. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. I'm Amen. just hearing amazing things that God is doing. And it just lets you know that God is still in the miracle working business. I just love the way that he takes care of us. He said, you know, if he takes care of the very fowl of the air, the very birds that fly in the air, how much more would he take care of us who were made in his image and his likeness? So I truly just thank God for what he's doing to each and every one of your lives. And I know that there's more that, you know, he's doing, you know, things for because you wouldn't be on the line if he wasn't. So I just thank and praise God, you know, um, for each and every testimony that went forth. Is there another? If not, we're going to go ahead um, with the service. Is there another? Is there somebody who just wants to render a selection? 
All righty, we're going to have our scripture reading by Sister Brianna Ross, and our scripture reading will be coming from 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter, verses one through five. For those of you who would like to follow along, you can follow along on your smart devices, on, you know, you can grab your Bible, um, whatever it is that you, you like to read from when you're in service. Most certainly now is the time to go ahead and get those things in your hand. Again, our scripture will be coming from 2 Timothy, that's in the New Testament, chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. Good evening, everybody. Um, in the presence of God and Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word, be prepared in season and out of season, correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather them a great number of teachers to say, what their, to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you keep your head in all situations, endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist, discharge all the duties of your ministry. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that, um, Sister Brianna, the reading of God's word. And we know that the reading of God's word is already blessed. I'm going to go ahead and do the announcements. Um, I'm not sure what happened to Sister Lisa, but the, the, the service must go on. Um, the announcements are as follows. On June 18th, we have our men's conference starting at 6 p.m. It's a Friday night service, and I pray that we will all come out and support our ministry. There's nothing like inviting guests to your home, and then you're not even there. So I pray that as many of you that can and will, if you will just come out on that Friday night, you know, at 6 p.m. so we can... Um, we can gather together in that place to hear the men speak. Um, our speakers will be Pastor Damon Gibbs from Grace and Mercy Family Ministries, Reverend Parrish Holloman from Shiloh Baptist Church, and Elder Charles Mitchell from One Heart, One Soul Ministries. Um, our theme is, am I my brother's keeper? You know, we did for the women last month, um, um, I am my sister's keeper, and this is called Am I My Brother's Keeper? So I'm truly excited for what these brothers are going to bring forth in this um, this men's conference, this one, one night men's conference. Um, I know that God is going to use them in a mighty way. So I encourage you all to invite your brothers, your sons, your fathers, your friends, your neighbors, any male that you know. And you can invite females too, because we know the word of God will find us exactly where we're at, no matter what type of service it is. So um, I'm just um, inviting you all to to go ahead and contact as many people as you know to come on and join us for that service. We won't be on service long, so I don't want that to be your concern. Why well, I don't want to go on. It's a Friday night, you know, this, this, that, you know, um, you know um, it's, it's time that we start getting our priorities um, in order, you know, and, and those times that we can gather together as people of God is, is um, something we need to be taking advantage of now because we're not going to always have this opportunity. The world is going in a, a downward spiral and it's only going to get worse. And then, you know, before you know it, they're going to take away these sorts of things. As you see, there's already killings taking place in churches and stuff like that. Bibles are going to become obsolete. So we really have to, you know, um, gather as, together as much as we can to strengthen each other, to fortify each other, to hear the word of God, you know, to learn so we can put it on the heart, as the Bible says, and not sin against God. So I encourage you to come out, you know, we'll be on, we'll do our, our, our usual service, which, which won't take long because we won't do the testimony part. We won't do the announcement part. You know, we'll kind of just do a, a opening prayer, a little bit of devotion, um, scripture reading, and then we'll go right into the speakers. So like I said, as many of you that can come out, I pray that you will come out and support Greater Love um, Christian Church um, ministry. So um, if you could please remember to mute your phones. Um, most of you are pretty good at this and I truly appreciate it. I know when we first got going, it was kind of rocky. People weren't used to Zoom and, you know, and it's not just greater love. It's everywhere. People just aren't used to being online, being on Zoom and having to mute yourself and, you know, you know, take yourself off mute and want to talk, whatever. But I think you guys really got the hang of it and I commend you. I'm so proud of you, you know, but um, 
sometimes we do forget that we're, we're unmuted because we just said something on church and now we're having a conversation in the background and that comes through the whole entire service. So I record all the services and it, it goes through the recording and everything. So we can just remember, you know, um, as soon as we're done talking, just hit that mute button again, you know, or if you want to move around, I, I don't have a problem with you moving around. Sometimes I have to move around when I'm in a meeting and I'll just mute my camera and I'll go take care of what I have to take care of quickly, come back, unmute myself, my camera. So if you have to move around, just, you you know, mute your camera so nobody see you walk around or nobody see you laughing with another person in the background or whatever and then you know when you're ready you can unmute yourself so i think i, I thank you all so much um you guys are doing a really great job with that we want to remember to keep our sick and shut in in prayer um you know our list is is um quite long um so we have sister quintella johnson we have uh, sister dawn ross brother michael ross sister lisa turner family sister debbie johnson family sister raven um, baby MJ, like I told you all last week, is doing uh, better. He's home, you know, with his parents now. Um, I see all kinds of pictures of him on Facebook. He's such a cutie and he's grown and we praise God for what he's done in his life. We want to keep uh, Sister Azure in prayer, Brother Keanu, Brother Roderick. Uh, my family most certainly, most certainly keep me in prayer as God has given me this charge. And you know, the enemy is going to come after me the hardest because I am the one that is delivering the word. So, um, if, and, and we want to keep our nation in prayer. We want to keep our rulers and our leaders and even if we don't agree with the position that they're in and we don't think that they're the ones that should be there promotion comes from God and God alone. So they are in those positions for a reason. It's all a part of his plan. So we have to continue to pray, 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 pray for gun violence that's taking place all over the land, whether it's cops on black boys or black boys on black boys. I'm just so tired of people losing their lives for senseless gun violence. So let's continue to keep that in prayer. Let's continue to lift up Israel. That is God's chosen people. And we know that they're going through a lot with the wars that stuff taking place over there so let's continue to lift them up as well and for all of you who have given your time your talents and your treasures god bless you god continues to see your faithfulness he sees your heart he sees your intent and so god will reward you trust me he will reward you openly um and may god continue to bless you all richly remember the blessings of the lord make it rich and in them there is no sorrow so those conclude the announcements for today we're going to continue on in the service um and I'm going to ask Brother Bird if he'll do the altar call prayer. I just feel like I'm kind of all over this uh, this program today because our normal people aren't on that normally do this. So I'm going to ask Brother Bird if he'll unmute himself and just kind of, you know, lift up those people that I called out. We can remember and look up our nation and just go ahead and let the Lord use you and pray. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Mm. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Reverend Ross. Um, Father God, I come right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. First of all, God, I give you reverence for who you are. And thank you for what your son did on that hill of Gagatha. In the name of Jesus. Father God, if I, I need you to forgive me for anything I said during the thought, God, that wasn't pleasing in your sight, God. I ask you to forgive me in the name of Jesus, God. Father, I don't know every name verbatim, what she called God, but you know them. But Father God, I need you to touch them from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. Anything in them, there, him, around them, they're not like you, God. I need you to move it for the east, from the west, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Father God, I need you to have your way and have your way in this service tonight, God. The one who bringing forth the word, God, I I pray that you are not her. Touch her mind, her spirit, body, and soul, God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, there any situation or circumstances that are not like you, that she's going through, God, I you remove it in the name of Jesus, God. Have your way where she can bring this word forward tonight. Bless them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Bless all the kids from the member of that church. And all over the land, God. Like she said, Israel, God. Father God, you know all about it. I need you to move right now, God. In the name of Jesus, God. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. And Father God, thank you for all the testimonies, God. All because of you, God. That is possible, Lord. And I thank you, God. And I lift you up. Because, Father God, you're the part of God. We're the clay, God. Continue molding us 
the devil of God accuses you. Still, God, in the name of Jesus, God. But, Father God, one thing that we do know, Lord, if you keep us, we'll be kept. If you bless us, we shall be blessed. And, Father God, we ask you all these things in Jesus' name. We do pray. And we say amen, amen, amen. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you for that wonderful prayer. We all know that there's something about talking to Jesus. I got people in the waiting room. I'm sorry, y'all, I'm out of breath. I had to run for a minute, but truly that prayer was wonderful. And um, there, like I said, there's something about talking to Jesus that truly makes everything all right. Um, no matter what you're going through, no matter what situation you face, no matter how dark it seems, always know that God is right there. He said, I'll never leave you nor will I forsake you. He's always right by your side. Even when you can't feel him and when you can't see him, that's when he's there the most. He said, I am near to the brokenhearted. So there's, you know, times in life when we certainly feel down and out and downtrodden. We feel like we can't lift our heads. We feel like we can't go on. We don't know how we're going to make it through the next day. But God is, and trust me, I am a witness. God is always there. So we thank God for that prayer that went forth. I'm trying to catch my breath because I know I got to sing next. And um, yeah, there's nobody on who can sing. So I'm going to go ahead and render a selection and then, it, and then we'll go into the word of God. We do have communion today, but you know, it won't take long um, and then we'll be dismissed. So falling in love with Jesus, falling in love with Jesus, falling in love with Jesus is the best thing I've ever but done. How many of y'all know that falling in love with Jesus is the best thing you could ever do? Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. Was the best thing I've ever done. In his arms, I feel protected. In his arms, I'm never disconnected. In his arms, I feel protected. There's no place I'd rather be. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love. With Jesus, falling in love with Jesus was the best thing I've ever done. My God, in his arms, I feel protected. In his arms, never disconnected. In his arms, I feel protected. There's no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather, I'd rather There's no place 
this I'd rather be. Hallelujah. 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 There's no place I'd rather be. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus guarantees us a safe place. That place where the enemy can't touch you. That place where the enemy can't get you. Even when he tries, even when he amps up his game, even when he comes with all those demons, there's a place in God that you can dwell where you are safe at all times. There's a song that says, I'm safe in his arms. So we just thank and praise God for being in love with Jesus, but more importantly for Jesus being in love with us. I want to read you a little story before I go ahead and, 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 and oh, actually I'm going to go into my scripture first and then I'm going to go ahead and read the story. I know Brianna read it, but I want to read it again. So just bear with me. I have to multitask um, with my smart device and sometimes it takes a little bit of time. Uh, again, our scripture will be coming from um, 2 Timothy, that's in the New Testament the fourth chapter verses one through five and the script and i'm coming from the um amplified um amplified bible so it may read different from your your version the scripture simply says preach the word i solemnly charge you in the presence of god and of christ jesus who is to judge the living and the dead and by his appearing and his kingdom preach the word as an official messenger, be ready when the time is right. And even when it is not, keep your sense of urgency, whether the opportunity seems favorable or unfavorable, whether convenient or inconvenient, whether welcome or unwelcome, correct those who err in doctrine or behavior, warn those who sin, exhort and encourage those who are growing towards spiritual maturity with inexhaustible patience and faithful teaching. For the time will come where people will not tolerate sound doctrine and accurate instruction that challenges them with God's truth. But wanting to have their ears tickled with something pleasing, they will accumulate for themselves many teachers, one after another chosen to satisfy their own desires and to support the errors they hold and will turn their ears away from the truth and will wander off into myths and man-made fictions and will accept the unacceptable. But as for you, be clear-headed in every situation. Stay calm and cool and steady. Endure every hardship without flinching. Do the work of an evangel evangelist. Fulfill the duties of your ministry. Let us pray. God, as we go into the the meat of the service on this evening, God. I ask, oh God, right now in the name of Jesus, that you would decrease me, that you would be the increase, God. I pray right now, God, in the name of Jesus, that you would hide me behind Calvary's cross, oh God, that they will not see me, but that they will hear you. God, I pray, oh God, as the word comes forth, that you speak in and through and to me, God, in the name of Jesus, that it shall not fall on foul ground, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Jesus, God, but it shall take root, oh God, and grow, oh God. We thank you in the name of Jesus, oh God, for the seeds that shall be planted, God. We thank you for the ones that will come along and water, God, and we thank you that you always give the increase, God. God, have your way, oh God. Do with me what you will. It is in Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. I'm going to go ahead and read that story now. Um, I got to get back to it, so. Give me one second. Okay, I think this is it. All righty. And, and um, it's kind of, it's more and more of a letter. So I'm going to read it, but I want you to really listen, listen to what um, the person is saying in the letter. She's writing to her brother. I believe it's a female. She's writing to her brother, Joey, who was about to enter into the, um, the ninth grade and enter into a different school. She says, Dear Joey, tomorrow is the first day of ninth grade at your new junior high school. I wanted to write this letter, not because I'm any wiser than you, but because I've been through junior high and I know what you will face tomorrow. Sometimes it is going to be very hard to do what you know is right. 
it will seem like you're the only one who believes in the church. You'll want to go along with the crowd because you'll think they'll reject you for being different. You might think that you will be laughed at and ridiculed for standing up for what is right. I know that sometimes you will feel very much alone. I am writing this letter to share with you something I have learned about challenges and the importance of always standing up for what you know to be right, regardless of what others may think. Last summer when I was away from home going to school in Manchester, England, I had to ride the bus into town every day. Then I had to walk several blocks through the worst part of the city in order to get to my college. I remember that the most corrupt street of all was right next to my bus stop. The walls of the street shops were covered with obscenities, pornographic posters, rude writing, and vulgar swear words. There were several bars where loud, questionable music could be heard every time the doors opened. People inside called out crude things to me as I walked. The first time I went into town to attend school, I got off the bus and walked right down this street. About halfway down, I was so sick, offended, and afraid that I didn't think I could make it the rest of the way. I did with my eyes shut as much as possible, but I decided at that moment, but I decided at that moment that I would never walk down that street again. Being far away from our home and family, I had plenty of things to worry about and more temptations than I could ever list. I certainly didn't need to add this street to my worries. So every day when I got off the bus to go to school, I would walk an entire block out of my way to avoid that street. Sometimes on rainy mornings when I was late to an eight o'clock class, I would want to forget that what I had resolved and take the shorter route. But I knew I would feel sick inside if I let myself be exposed to unclean things. Crossing that street to take the long way around every morning just became a habit. After a while, I didn't even think of why I was doing it. Then one afternoon, a friend of mine, Bob, offered to show me a new music store close to my bus stop. As we left the college together, I automatically crossed the street. What are you doing, Bob asked. Without thinking, I answered, I can't walk on that street. Why not, he laughed. Suddenly, I heard myself telling the whole story. I was far from home and didn't want to return to my family with a lot of bad thoughts in my mind that didn't belong there. I was uncomfortable on that street. Bob was several years older than I and knew more of the ways of the world. I fully expected him to laugh again, and I felt foolish for even telling him about my feelings. Waiting for his laughter, I looked up to find a very subdued expression on his face. After a few minutes of silence, very uncomfortable ones for me, he told me he wished he had a commitment like mine when he first came to school. I wish I had crossed a few streets, Vivian, he said. I'm ashamed to go home and see my family. I can't look mom in the face after some of the things I've seen and done. We stood in silence for a few more minutes, but it was a comfortable one now. Then he took my arm and we crossed the street together. We found our music store in no time at all and had a chance for a wonderful conversation because of the route we took. He is now a friend I will always treasure. I didn't have to preach a sermon on moral and mental cleanliness. All I did was cross the street and there was something that I wasn't supposed to be exposed to on the other side. He didn't sneer or criticize or think I was odd. By doing what I knew to be right, I actually earned Bob's respect and friendship. Joey, I know it, we, it will be hard in school, but I also know that you will never lose the respect of anyone whose respect is worth having by standing up for what you know to be right and good. Besides, the real issue is not what your peers and schoolmates think of you, but what do you think of yourself? Do you care enough about yourself as a child of God to cross the street when you ought to? Will you leave the room when friends tell a bad joke or a dirty story? Will you stand up for something you believe in? If you will, I know you'll find that many whose admiration is really worth having will cross the street with you. When I read that story, I, I just felt as though that was such a deep story and it really captured what it means to stand up for something that is right. And this is simply what Paul is telling Timothy. Paul is the apostle who wrote most of the New Testament. And Paul 
started out his journey as Saul, who was one that persecuted Christians. He held the, the, the coats of the, the, the ones um, that were um, stoning the Christians, that were killing Christians, because they didn't think that this Jesus Christ faith, this Christianity um, should be something that should be, should be um, you know, presented in their time. They didn't believe in it. So he was the one that held the coats of those who did the throne that, you know, so he was, he didn't always start out as Paul, but um, as we know, as I preached before, he had an experience on a road called Damascus where everything changed. And now he became Paul and he became one of the greatest apostles to ever live. And Timothy is, is, is considered Paul's son in the gospel. So Paul is, is, is given this final charge to Timothy, and who was considered, like I said, his son in the gospel. Uh, he is, Timothy is one that Paul has personally trained himself. And, and um, Paul, since that the time of his death was near, so he was given Timothy instructions on how to continue in the faith and not be swayed by what the crowd was saying or what the crowd was doing, but to always preach the truth of the word of God. Paul was inspired by the Holy Ghost and understanding that the vital importance of the word of God, that he knew would constantly, that he knew that people were gonna constantly attack God's word. He knew that Satan was gonna go through people to constantly attack God's word. So he charged Timothy, but not only did he charge Timothy, but he charged every preacher and pastor that would come after Timothy to keep the true word of God. And as you can see, in the times that we live in today, as the Bible says, there's going to be times of itchy ears. There's going to be times when people are, are not going to endure sound doctrine. And as you can see, those are the times that we live in today. People are following these faiths that they create themselves, and they, they feel as though they're still going to heaven. That's, you know, that's that's the way it's supposed to God didn't mean it like that. Most certainly, that's not what that scripture means. And so people are creating these, these ideations in their head. That, that they believe it is true and sound doctrine and that they don't have to specifically go by everything that the Bible says. They can skip out some parts, they can add some parts and they can kind of do what they want. But Paul is saying that's not the way to do it. We must literally go and take God at his word and do exactly what God is telling us to do. Say exactly what God is saying us to do. Live exactly how God is saying us to live and we cannot, we cannot put up with anything less. The word of God is the only thing that can deliver somebody from being sick, whether they're sick with addiction, whether they're sick with fornication, whether they're sick with gambling, whether they're sick with being anxious, being nervous, being fearful. No matter what the sickness is, the word of God is the only thing that can go down, the Bible says, like, and it's sharper than the two-edged sword that can cut up and get down to the bone and marrow and pierce that person and cleanse that person and purge that person. So that's one thing that we cannot get away from is the word of God. We must always preach the truth in season and out of season. And the reason why I chose this scripture today is because I am going through a season right now. I didn't want to come on here and preach, but I told God, I need you to preach to me today. I need you to talk to me today. And God said, I need you to preach when, you, when it's convenient and when it's not. Right now, it's not convenient for what I'm going through. But I know that the Holy Spirit has a plan. And I want to be an example of what God is calling me to be. And that means when it's comfortable, rather you preach. And when it ain't comfortable, you preach. And so I am on here today, allowing the Holy Spirit to use me to let you know that, yes, I, too, am human. And I, too, go through stuff. And I, too, have situations that are too sometimes but as a child of God and as being called to the charge that God has laid on my heart I shall go forth and do what God is calling me to do and that's what Paul is saying to Timothy in this in this in this letter he's saying Timothy I need you to no matter what the world is doing no matter what the world is saying no matter how wicked the world becomes I need you to keep this charge that you will preach the word of God and you will preach the true word of God and you will not let nothing take the word of God but see, Paul wasn't only calling the preachers and the pastors to preach the true word of God. Paul was also calling the parishioners to listen to the true word of God. And so if I had to give this, 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 this message a title, it would simply be preach, teach, listen, and take it in. Preach, teach, listen, and take it in. For the preachers and the pastors, preach and teach. For the congregation, listen and take it in. Paul was call, also calling the, the parishioners to, to, to understand what sound doctrine was. We live in such a society where there's such a watered down Christianity. 
we have two. I, I looked at these two different churches that we have, and um, I was like, you know, that is so true of, about the churches. We have the church that's called the the secret church, and and what the secret church does is is it attempts it, it attracts seekers by preaching what they want to hear, and I know all of you who have been around a little while can attest that you've been in a church like that, you've seen a church like that on TV, or you've witnessed something like that where preachers will preach exactly what the congregation wants to hear. And the reason why they do this, they preach what they want to hear is because it keeps the people coming back. It grows the church. It keeps. If, if I know that the pastor is going to preach exactly what I want to preach, he, I don't want to hear nothing about hell. Oh, no, no, no. Don't you tell me nothing about hell. Don't you tell me nothing about what I'm doing wrong. I don't want to hear about my anger issues. I don't want to hear about fornication. I don't want to hear about lying and gossiping and cheat. But I want you to preach something that's going to make me feel good. You know what? I'm going to go back to that preacher every single week. And that's what the secret church does. And then you have the emergent church. The emergent church is for those uh, for those fixed messages that they're tailored, if you will, for a postmodern culture that does not accept the idea of absolute truth. It emphasizes more unsatisfying self with 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 their spiritual experience um, in a, in a completely non-judgmental atmosphere. And as you all know, we can see that uh, today in in the church today. When you look at just the homosexuality that goes on in our land today and in our church today, everybody's saying love is love. It's okay to be who you are. But the Bible says homosexuality is an abomination. I refuse to let my children walk around on this earth thinking that love is love and it's okay to be gay and it's okay to do this and it's okay to do that. And I'm sending them to hell and I'm going to hell in the process because I'm condoning it. And I'm the one telling them that it's all right. But it seems like our society and, and our lay people have gotten so less than days ago that not only are they condoning this behavior and saying that it's okay, and it's okay to love who you want to love, and it's okay to be the way you want to be, and you can still make it to heaven, but you've got these preachers and, and, and lay people who are doing it themselves. You have women bishops who are marrying other women. You have men who are in the pulpit 30, 40, 50 years. Infamous, infamous preachers known to the world. And all of a sudden you hear how they got caught with this male and that male in the bed. But that's not what Paul is saying on today. Paul is saying, I would bid you to preach the word of God in its entirety. Don't take nothing from it. Don't add nothing to it. Preach the word of God when it's uncomfortable, when the world is looking at you like you're crazy, and when the world no longer likes you because you're not doing what they're doing. You're not saying the things that they want you to say. Preach the truth of the word of God regardless. Somebody's life literally depends on it. Yes, you may lose your very life when you go out there for preaching the truth of the word. And now I understood why when I asked God for that last time when I was first being called to preach in 2011. And I kept asking God for sign after sign that whole week I was a wreck because that's just something you don't play with is the word of God. And I understood that enough to know that I better be sure this is God calling me before I call myself going into a pulpit and preaching. And I asked God for one more sign the day before I was to have my trial sermon. I said, God, I need you to send me somebody that I've never seen before in my life to tell me that you are calling me to preach. And when I went to borders that day, and I was looking at some books. This man just came over and struck up a conversation with me. To this day, I say that man was an angel. But that man began to tell me that God was, I was questioning God about whether he was calling me to preach. And that God said, yes, he was calling me to preach. And that God said he was calling me to preach because I stood for the truth of the word of God. Listen to that. I didn't understand it then, but I do now. He said, because you stand for the truth of the word of God. He said, but young lady, you need to know that every time you go out there, you need to have your full armor of God on. He said, you're not going to be accepted in a lot of churches and a lot of places. He said, but not only that, be prepared because they are going to seek to take your very life. I will never forget that. man. I've forgotten a lot of prophecies over the years, but there's a few that I haven't. And that's one that I've never, ever forgotten. 
And now when I see myself and I don't fit into the norm, I don't fit into all these, these different, you know, churches and I see all these different leaders that really, really uh, just don't care for me or whatever. It, 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 it no longer has a hold on me to bother me because I know I'm in the right place. I know I'm doing what the Lord has called me to do and I shall continue to go forth and do exactly what God has called me to do. I will speak exactly what God has called me to speak. It doesn't matter if my brother fall out me. It doesn't matter if my sister fall out with me it doesn't matter if my child fall out with me i'm going to continue to do exactly what god has told me to do and i will not compromise no matter who likes it and who doesn't there is an importance to preaching the word of god in truth he said those that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth we can't sugarcoat god's word I refuse to sit there and give you a feel good message to keep you coming to my church. And then when I stand before God, your blood is on my hands. And he says, I'm sorry, but your name is not in the book. And I don't just do this thing for me, as I tell you all the time, it's not just contingent upon me making it into heaven. But God has connected me with so many different people. And I'm one of the type of people, no soul left behind. I want to pull as many people as I can to go with me. So God has set you as an example in the earth. That's why it's important as lay people that you can't be out here laying and playing and shucking and jiving and peeping and hiving, as Pastor Long used to say. We can't get out there and do those things. We got to get it right. We got to begin to live right. We got to begin to endure that sound doctrine. Ask God to feed us that sound doctrine. It's that sound doctrine that's going to make and shape and mold us. The way God wants us to be. Preach the word. Teach the word. When it's convenient and when it's not convenient. In season and out of season. It doesn't matter what the time is. It doesn't matter what everybody else is doing. We live in a time, a day, in an age where you literally are, people are literally losing their lives for preaching the word of God. For living the word the way God wants us to live. People are going into churches shooting up numerous congregants and pastors. But we can't let that make us afraid. We can't let what we see in the carnal make us afraid because we know that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through the pulling down of strongholds. Lift up your heads, O oh ye gates, and be ye lifted up ye everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. We don't have to worry about nothing. God said, I will fight your battle. Vengeance belongs to me. And we really got to get it set in our heart, even if I do lose my life on the battle, because we all sing that song, I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. And we know as soldiers, there's a great chance we're going to be killed in battle. But we know that if we, we lose our life in battle, we're not losing our life. Because God said, when you live in me, I will pick your life back up again. You shall be resurrected the same way I resurrected my son. And you shall live in eternity with me. So we don't have to be afraid. But people, there's one thing we got to do is we got to get it right. We cannot keep playing church and not be in the church. We can't keep being holy, holy on church and speaking in tongue and shouting and, and praying heaven down. And then the next thing I know, I'm cussing my neighbor out because he done said something I didn't like or he done did something I didn't like. We can't be fickle in this thing. God is not a fickle God. He said, I change not. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He's not fickle like human beings. They're with you one minute and they're not the next. God is one that you can count on always. But can God count on you is the question. Can he count on you to be exactly who he's calling you to be every single day that you walk the earth? Can he count on you to be that inspiration and that encouragement to that brother, that sister who's going through? Can he count on you to pull your sister aside and say, sis, I love you too much and I know what you're doing and God really would not approve of that and I'm praying that you would get out of that and if there's something I can do to help you get up out of that sin, please let me know because I want to help you. Are we walking the earth pleading the case of 
Jesus Christ. Are we going around letting people know that I know a savior who picked me up and cleaned me up and turned me around and placed my feet on a solid ground and he can do the same thing for you? Are we pleading his case to people that as we walk the earth and we see people in various places doing various things? The truth is we ought to be telling everybody we come in contact about this Jesus who has saved us. Preach the word. The word is given for reproof, pleading the case of Jesus Christ, pleading what he has done for us. For rebuke, letting people know when they're in sin and they're on their way to hell. And for exhortation, encouraging your brother or sister when they are going the right way. Keep them encouraged so they, they don't become dismayed. Because this is not a, a popular walk. This is a rather lonely walk. And this, in, in this day and age, this can be a scary walk. That's why your feet have to be firmly planted in Jesus Christ. Planted like a tree, planted by the waters, deeply rooted. Because the way of the world is getting worse and worse and worse. Look at the hackers. They hacked into our gas stations, shut some gas stations down. They hacked into these meat plants, stopped the meat plant from operating. They hacked into a railway. They're, they're, they're in other countries, hacking and shutting stuff down in America, causing a spike in food. There's already people out there starving like crazy right now. But there's a giant sinkhole, I forgot what, what country it was, that swallowed up a big part of the farmland. These things are ushering in famine. That's just gonna be worse than we've ever seen. We already know that there's pestilences everywhere. Look at the coronavirus. It took thousands and thousands and thousands of lives. We see earthquakes, we see storms, we see hail, we see snow in places that it never took place before. We're witnessing this with our very own eyes. And Jesus said, when you see these things coming, know that the end is near, but don't become afraid. The end is not yet for perilous times are coming. We see nation rising against nation. We see wars and rumors of wars. We see the signs. But Jesus said, don't become afraid because these things have to happen before I come back. But my question is, what are you listening to? What are you going by? Whose report are you going to believe? Do you believe what God is telling you in his word? Is this something you're just doing to pass the time? Is this something you're doing to think that this is my ticket into heaven? Or are you really taking this thing seriously and taking it to heart for what it is? This is a serious walk. And God is putting out a serious cry for some ambassadors that will stand up for him. It doesn't matter what your pastor sees. It doesn't matter what so-and-so sees. God is always there and he sees everything that happens at all times. He even sees the intent that's in your heart that you never even spoke out of your mouth. He sees the lust that's in your eye. He sees the lying that's on your tongue. He sees the gossip that escapes your mouth. God sees everything. He sees you when you're in your, your booze bed at night and that ain't your husband or that ain't your wife. He sees everything. He said, I am omnipresent. I'm everywhere all the time. I'm omniscient. I know everything. There's nothing you can hide from me. Everything is naked and exposed in the eyesight of the Lord. But yet we worry about what pastor so-and-so going to see or deacon so-and-so going to see. We want to act like we got it all together. We got in a bag of chips. And we so holy. And then the minute we get out of their eyesight, we doing everything that we feel as though we big and bad enough to do. God said, I'm looking for difference. I'm looking for somebody who's going to stand. Somebody I could point my finger and say, look at Dawn. That's my daughter. She had a choice to go left or go right. And she chose the right choice. Nobody was around. Nobody was looking. She could have got away with that. But she chose to do the right thing. That's my daughter. Look at my baby. I'm proud of her. That's what God is looking for. 
He's looking for us to stand up and to do right. Not just the preachers and the teachers. Yes, they are charged more. Yes, they are held more accountable. To whom much is given, much is required. But he's also looking for the lay people, the congregation. You don't stay on milk forever as a child and as a baby. As you begin to grow, your diet changes. A baby goes from milk to, to the puree foods, for, to, for, from milk to the cereal to the puree foods, from the puree foods to the chunky foods, from the chunky foods, they go to the whole milk with the chunky foods, and eventually they're eating regular food. So we can't expect that we come in this thing, we're walking this walk, we're saying that God is our Lord and Savior, Jesus died for me on Calvary's cross, but yet we continue to stay on milk. Jesus said, if you want to be my disciples, you got to pick up your cross daily and follow me. There's requirements to being a disciple. He didn't say if you continue to live. Matter of fact, he said, if you don't pick up your cross, then you are none of mine. But yet you got these preachers preaching that you could do everything in your imagination that you feel as though you want to do and you still go in heaven. But there's a scripture that says, many shall come to me and say, Lord, Lord, he's going to say, depart from me, you work of iniquity, you worker of sin. I never knew you. I don't know you. This is not something I'm making up. It's not something I pull off the top of my head. This is real. And this is how real we have to be. And I'm not saying you're going to dot every I, you're going to cross every T. But what I'm saying is live your life to the best of your ability. There's some things that you continue to do that I continue to do that we know that don't please God, but we do them anyway because we say we're under God's grace. Oh, God knows my heart. Yes, he knows your heart. He created your heart. He created everything inside of your body, inside your anatomy. But that is not an excuse to continue in the ways that displease God. And then we think when we stand before him and we did him some great service in the earth, he tells us, get away from me. I don't even know you, you worker of sin. Preach the word. Teach the word. Listen to the word and take it in. God is calling us all to a charge on this line tonight. And I don't never exempt myself because I know I'm going to be working on me for the rest of my life. Simply because God said, I will begin the good work in you. I won't stop until the day Jesus Christ returns. So I know I'm always working on the issue within me. But I know for the most part, I am living my best godly life that I can live. Yes, you're going to stumble along the way. Yes, you're going to fall. That's why Jesus Christ went to the, the cross of Calvary. But don't make choices that displease God and stay in them. Don't walk around on that, that, that trump card that says God knows my heart. Because Paul also says, should sin abound because grace abounds that much more? Certainly not. You shouldn't sin because, because you are under the law of grace and mercy. There's consequences to everything that we do. There's consequences. And, and I don't know about you, but I don't want to take that chance of standing before him. And he says to me, I don't know you. Who are you? I, I don't want to take that chance. And not only did I, did I think I was doing a service and I was making the heaven, but I got my children who are watching my life. And now they, they, they mock what I do because kids are sponges. They absorb what we do. So now they mock the way I live. And then they stand before God. And God says, I don't know you. And then their children. And he says, I don't know you. Saints of God and ain'ts of God. If we don't do nothing else in life, we have to do to the best of our ability what God is calling us to do. And if you think about it, it's nothing that's bad. It's not, it's, it's not a lot. It's, 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 it's getting this flesh under subjection. Because remember, the flesh is not subject to the things of God. The flesh is only subject to the things of the flesh. That's why it's desirous and it's lustful. And that's why it goes back into the ground. It doesn't enter into heaven because it's lustful to itself. That's why you got men walking around looking at all these girls. You got 50-year-old women sleeping with 18-year-old boys. 
You got to me. I'm a, I'm a true example. I go in the grocery store for one thing, and I, next, I know I done seen some ice cream I want. I done seen some chips I want to try. I done picked up all that stuff because the flesh is desirous to the flesh. We have to get this charge right if we don't do nothing else. Now, if you don't want to make it into heaven, live your life any way you want to do. Keep on gossiping about your brother and sister. Keep on blaming everybody for how your life went. Keep on fornicating. Keep on lying. Keep on doing whatever you want to do. Keep on cussing folk out. I'm so curious, though. How do you represent Jesus Christ, the most high God, when you cuss people out? If Jesus was standing right beside you, would you cuss that person out? Would you? I don't think so. So why, in essence, he is. He said, I'll never leave you, nor I'll forsake you. He's right there. I tell you, I'm human, and I get angry sometimes. And there's sometimes when I want to and just ramble off with some curses, but I stop, and I remember who I am, but more importantly, I remember whose I am. And I think to myself, now, how is that going to represent Jesus Christ? Especially when that person knows that I serve God. How is that going to affect that person? See, it ain't so much as getting even and getting back at that person. More so, you have to think that that's one more soul that can make it into heaven if I replicate who Jesus Christ is. Now, I may get angry and say, you know, get out my face. I want to talk to you, whatever, whatever. But I'm not going to cuss you out. I'm not, I'm not, there's some things I'm not going to do because I'd much rather see you make it into heaven. And I'd much rather see you get down the line six months and say, you know, she could have did some things and said some things, but she just chose not to. She just kind of said, get out my face, leave me alone. Don't, you know, don't, don't talk to me out and whatever. You know what I'm saying? There's a certain point you get to in your walk with Jesus Christ where these things should just happen naturally. The first thing should not be cussing somebody out. The first thing should not be talking about your brother and your sister. There's a place where you're getting God where you should have grown up. You should have matured in the faith. God has given us a charge from the pulpit to the door. He has given us a charge to preach, to teach, to listen, and to take it in. Don't just let it fall on foul ground. But let it be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water. And it grows and it grows and it grows and it's deep rooted. It's so strong and solid. And that's how God wants us to be. That same example. Representing him. And he could say, look at my daughter, Alizé. Look at my daughter, Brianna. Look at my daughter, Raven. Look at my daughter, Quintella. Look at my son, Floyd. Look at my son, Thomas. Look at my daughter, Deborah. Look at my daughter, Karina. Look at my daughter, Kayla. Look at my daughter, Dawn. I'm so proud of them. They had a choice to do the wrong thing. And nobody was looking, nobody was watching, but they chose to do the right thing. You know, I used to work for a, 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 a company called EDS Service Solutions. And what we did was we contracted out um, rental cars through the budget. And I was the hiring manager. And so there was a, a, a office manager who was over me. And then it was me, the hiring manager. And then we had an assistant manager. And so we used to, I used to order office supplies and we used to get all these supplies. And then sometimes I order it and it would just be crazy paper towels and stuff like that because we didn't use them up as quick as I was, I would order them. And one day he had said to me, he said, you know, Miss Robin, because that, that's what they call me in a job, Miss Robin. You know, you and I could take these paper towels home and get away with it. And I, the first thing I thought to myself was, what would Jesus think of me if I took these paper? Because that's stealing. And I said, no, I'm good. You know, I, no, I don't want nothing. You know, I'm good. I, I got plenty of paper towels at home. He's like, yeah, but Miss Robin, who's going to know? You know, we could put them in the boxes and, you know, just pretend like we take in boxes because we kept, we had boxes from the supplies, you know, in our office. And sometimes people would need boxes for moving. I said, no, I, I said, no, really. I said, I, I just don't believe in stuff like that. I, I have plenty of stuff at home and I don't believe in, you know, taking something that doesn't belong to me. So he never took it. I don't know what he did after I left the position, but he never took it while I was there. But that's doing the right thing in spite of. Nobody else would have saw. Nobody else would have known that him and I were taking those paper towels. But I knew, and more importantly, God knew. 
So we, are, we, we have a charge. God is charging each and every one of us from this moment on to do the right thing, to make the right choice in season and out of season, when it's convenient and when it's not convenient. Do what's right. Don't watch your sister or brother sinking in sin and you do nothing about it. Don't walk by somebody who could who could stand to use the, 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 the news of Jesus Christ and you don't say anything. You don't open your mouth. Don't miss the opportunity to encourage your brother and sister who you know is week by week going to church and, and they're trying their best. Pre- even, I even encourage those who may come on once a month or twice a month. If they say something like, I, I know I've been slacking, I know I've been this, I know I, I automatically encourage them. God sees the time that you do come on. God knows what you're going through. He knows that you, you got the situation. Encourage them so that they'll keep coming. They'll keep listening to the word of God. They'll keep learning what God has to say. Church, I bid you all tonight that as God has laid this charge for each and every one of us, that we will take it and that we will be the ambassadors that he is calling us to be. If you trip and stumble, get back up, dust yourself off, ask for forgiveness and keep on moving. But when it's all said and done, be the one that he says when you stand before him, well done, thou good and faithful servant, come on in and live in eternity with me. Be blessed everybody. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. We're gonna, we're not gonna delay. We're gonna go ahead into our communion. Um, it's already 7:30. I didn't know the Holy Spirit was gonna take me where he in the direction that he took me, but you know, I'm I'm always one to go where he wants me to go. I told him I will open my mouth and you fill it, and that's exactly what I did. So I'm gonna ask Minister Donna, she'll read our, our um communion scripture, um, and then I'll do the prayer. Right. And I want everybody to get their communion ready. Um, First Corinthians chapter 11. Do you have it? Okay. Yeah. Okay. For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do and remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, he do show the Lord's death till he comes. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink the cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh a damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation. And the rest will I set in order when I come. Praise God. Let us pray. God, we thank you for this opportunity, O oh God, to share in the breaking of bread, O oh God, which represents your body, O oh God, in the drinking of the wine, O oh God, which represents your blood, O oh God, that was shed for us on Calvary's cross, O oh God, as you were bruised and you were crushed, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, as your blood, O oh God, spilled out everywhere, O oh God. We just say thank you, O oh God, how that was done for each and every one of us, O oh God, on the line, but not just those of us that are in line, but mankind everywhere, God. 
You said you came to seek the lost and the dying, God, and that includes every person that ever walked the earth, oh God, because we know, oh God, that there's none righteous, no, not one, oh God. We know that sin, oh God, is, we are born into sin, oh God, and that each one of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So God, we thank you, oh God, for your, your bruised and tattered body, oh God, that was crushed for us, and we thank you for your blood, oh God, that was poured out for us, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we ask, oh God, that you would be in this communion service. God, let us examine our hearts as the scripture said, oh God. And for those, those things that we have done wrong, God, I pray right now that we would ask in our hearts for forgiveness before taking this communion, oh God. And God, not only that, but that you would strengthen us as we take this communion, oh God, as we eat this bread and as we drink this cup, that you would give us the strength that we need to overcome these obstacles, oh God that the enemy keeps trying to throw in our path, oh God. But God, we know, oh God, that when you said it is finished, God, you did it and it was done and you overcame everything and the battle was won. So we say thank you in the name of Jesus, God. Now, as we eat this bread and as we drink this wine, we ask God that you would bless it, sanctify it. Oh God, let it represent Oh God, the work that you have done on Calvary's cross and the blood, oh God, that is still efficacious, oh God, that still works, oh God, in the name of Jesus, until that great day when you come back and drink it with us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Christians, what do you believe? Brianna? We believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under, under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father Almighty. From there, from there he will come to death the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Christian church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and everlasting life. Amen. 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 The Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was being betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Drink ye all of it. Father, we come to this table as your guest, resting only in the worthiness of your son. As we look upon the emblems of our Savior's death, may we, we remember why he died, to cleanse and to heal, to satisfy your righteousness and justice. We remember his eternal love and boundless grace. May we receive the assurance of forgiveness, eternal life, and the hope of glory. As the bread and cup nourish our bodies, so may your indwelling Holy Spirit strengthen our soul until the day of Christ's appearing when we will hunger and thirst no more and sit with him at his heavenly table. Amen. Let us all recite the Lord's prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, will be done on, earth on earth as it is in heaven. Is heaven. Give us this day Give our this daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, our trespasses. as we forgive and those who trespass against us. us. And lead us not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I know it was the blood. Well, I know it was the blood. Well, I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost. Jesus died on the cross. 
And I know where we want to go. At this time, we're going to ask our minister in training, Sister Dawn Ross, if she'll do the invitation for salvation and open up the doors of the church. Praise the Lord. Amen. At this time, the doors of the church are open. If you're looking for a church home, if you're just looking to be under her leadership, now is the time. If not, we're going to have everybody unmute yourself and we are going to say this prayer together. Can I say, Father? Father. Uh, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. I admit that I'm a sinner. I admit that I'm a sinner. And I fall short of your glory. I fall short of your glory. I believe. I believe. That Jesus lived. That Jesus, that Jesus lived, lived, died, 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 and rose again for my and sin. Rose again for and my rose sin. again for my sin. I accept him as my I Lord and Savior. I accept him as accept my, him Lord and my Lord and Savior. So I ask you to come into my heart. So I ask you to come into my heart. My heart. Live inside of me. Live inside of me. And take charge of my life. And take charge, take of, my charge life. of my life. I thank you for saving me. I thank you. Thank, thank you for saving, thank me. You for saving me. For saving me. Saving me. Amen. Amen. What a beautiful service. I just thank each and every one of you for coming out on the line tonight. May God bless you all. Go in the peace of the Lord. And now may the Lord watch between me and thee while we're absent one from another amen amen and amen, amen. hallelujah i love you praise all. the lord and hallelujah i will see you next sunday i will let you guys know if we're gonna have bible study this week if you don't hear from me that means we're not having it as i said my schedule is really extremely busy and um i'm just trying to find time for me so um eventually um you know the the weeks i'm able to have bible study i will let you reach out and let you guys know and if you don't hear from me that means we're not going to have in the meantime i suggest that you go into the book of samuel and begin reading about david um the only um i found some animation cartoons which i think is better to watch than the real thing because once you watch the animation then it can help you when you watch the 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 book of david the real thing so if you guys could go ahead and find a couple of those and begin at the beginning of um david's uh, ministry and and then uh, we, when we come together we can talk but i know i know uh, sister dawn has already started studying um um david and his ministry so i'm praying that you all will too and then when we do come together we can kind of do q a Q&A and and talk about you know what you got out of that so I love you all, and I will see you all, um, if not for Bible study on Wednesday or Saturday, I will see you all on Sunday. God bless you. Love God you bless. all. God bless. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.